Welcome to Newsday. I'm Sharon Jutlail in Singapore. The headlines. I'm Le Boutiseco in London, also on the programme. Well, good morning. It's midnight in London, 7 p.m. in Washington and 7 a.m. here in Singapore, where President Trump will meet Kim Jong-un next month. It will be the first time an American president has met a leader of North Korea. Mr. Trump made the announcement on Twitter, confirming that the summit will take place on June the 12th. The news came just hours after three Americans were released by North Korea, who arrived back on U.S. soil. Mr. Trump said he hoped the meeting would be a very special moment for world peace. Nick Bryant reports from Washington. All right, let's have a look at some of the day's other news now. And Israel has defended its airstrikes against Iranian targets in Syria. Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Tehran has crossed a red line. Now, this is Israel's biggest assault since the start of the war there, and it was in response to rocket attacks on Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. Iran's president says he does not want new tensions in the Middle East, but the U.S. accuses his country of provoking the escalation. Let's have a listen to what Mr. Netanyahu had to say. Also making news today, a 104-year-old scientist who traveled... All right, I want to show you these pictures because this dusty, dry, arid expanse used to be a large body of water. This is the Aquilo Lagoon in Chile, just south of the capital, Santiago, or it used to be. That 12 square kilometer lake has completely dried up, something that's never happened before. And the reason? Local experts say that drought conditions are to blame, but also overconsumption of water. Now, he may be 92 years old, but Mahathir Mohamed is a man in a hurry. The veteran politician has become Malaysia's prime minister again after his party's shock election victory, 15 years after he stood down. The result ended more than six decades of rule by the coalition, which included Mr Mahathir's former party. We asked the country's youth what they made of him. Young Malaysians there on what they think of uh, Mahathir Mohamad. Well, I've been speaking to uh, Eason Oh, he's the former political secretary to ex-Prime Minister Najib Razak about the transition of power. And that was Eason Oh there speaking to me earlier. Well, you're watching Newsday on the BBC, still to come on the programme. Welcome back. You're watching Newsday on the BBC. I'm Sharon Jitlail in Singapore. And I'm Lebu Tiseko in London. Our top story... Let's take a look now at some of the front pages from around the world and no big surprise about what leads the uh, the front page of the Straits Times, uh, which, of course, is all about the swearing in of Malaysia's new prime minister. The paper focuses on Mahathir Mohamad's promise that his government will be business friendly. And the South China Morning Post has some good news for villagers in Hong Kong's northern new territories. It says 550 million Hong Kong dollars will be made available uh, to those being forced to leave their homes to make way for new town developments. And finally, the international edition of the New York Times has some cheeky news from Paris. The Palais de Tokyo is hosting a special tour where visitors wear uh, apparently nothing at all but their shoes. It's the first of its kind in France and has proven popular with about 30,000 people registering interest. And that's it for some of the front pages. Uh, Leba, what are some stories sparking discussions online? Well, Sharon Jeet, surprise, surprise, it is Donald Trump. Not much unusual there, but this time he may have gone too far. The US Returning now to our top story, and that's, of course, Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un meeting right here in Singapore on June the 12th for a historic summit, the first time leaders of the United States and North Korea have actually met. Well, our correspondent Stephen McDonnell is in Seoul and spoke to me earlier. Steve McDonnell in our Sydney studio there. Now, the humble bicycle has been a mainstay of China city streets for decades, but in the past few months, giant mountains of discarded frames have been cropping up around the country. And that's because the authorities have been impounding thousands upon thousands of rental bikes that they say are clogging the streets. Let's go to our Beijing correspondent, John Sudworth. Now, later this year, Asia is going to get its own singing competition based on the legendary Eurovision Song Contest. It is renowned for producing the best and also some of the bizarre, and it has a following right across the world. Now, this year's final takes place in Portugal on Saturday night. 
But there is a country in the region that's already been taking part for the last few years. Australia joined in the fun in 2015 and they've just qualified for the final in the past few hours. Well, earlier I spoke to the man who will be announcing the results of their voting on Saturday, Ricardo Gonçalves. 12th is the date. It's been set uh, for that huge historic meeting between Trump and Kim Jong-un. Uh, uh, and it's right here in Singapore, so undoubtedly it will be a very busy time for our bureau. So uh, continue to watch. We'll bring you all the latest on that. And uh, coming up, though, we've got more. For now, do stay with us on BBC World News.